Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore at night. Usually when I start one of these I say, oh we've got terrible conditions tonight. We've actually got some quite good conditions tonight. Usually it's howling a gale of wind or it's pouring down with rain. Tonight we're going out on the shore and we're going to go and do some foraging. Now we've got some large spring tides. We've got another hour of the ebb, which means it's still an hour to go out. We're going to follow it down to the low tide line and then follow it back up for another hour. We're going to walk an area of shore and tonight we're looking for shellfish. Clams, mussels, cockles, scallops. That's the plan, that's the hope. So I've got my lucky foraging bucket. Oh, and you will not see me on the shore at night without one of these. I'm not going to go into the full safety brief that I usually give to everybody at the start of these videos because the people who follow the channel have seen it all before. Basically, use your common sense and be safe. Go and have fun, but be safe. That being said, let's go and see what we can find. If you were ever going to be coming to a new area of shoreline and you want to know what's going to be in that area, you want to know what you might be able to forage, the best place to look is the high tide line. Looking along here, anything that's living out there, when it dies, will end up up here. Slipper limpets, limpets, mussels, cockles, winkles. Everything that you could want to find out there, you will find up here on the high tide line. So yeah. This also is a dog cockle. So that's a normal, a normal cockle. That's a dog cockle. This is what we're looking for. That is a nice sized cockle. And you can just find them just sat in the sand, look. It's a very camouflaged little crab, isn't it? There's a whelk. Oh, we're a hermit crab inside. There's a little cockle. You don't want to be taking them unless they're like this size. That size is too small. Right, all I'm using is just a little UV light. See him? There's a little crab. There's one of those anemones. Now look, there's a couple more crabs. Look, these anemones here. Now look. There's a nice cockle. That's an interesting find there, isn't it? Look. It's a big spiny starfish. small there is a little fish in there I just can't get it because it's that dirty there's a hermit crab 
Oh, it's a Rocklin, I've just seen it. There it is, yeah, look. This here is a queen scallop with a bit of growth on it. Now, can you see? There it is. That's actually about legal size for a queenie, but they are that small that I don't bother taking them. One of the things I'm looking for, I don't know if you can see this here, but there is like a hole. See how it's scooped out? Now, there's another one there, look. Right, sometimes it's fish, but other times it's scallops. So scoop out a little hole and sit in it. See the little hermit crabs? Now there are quite a lot of little fish around, they look like dragonets. There is another hermit crab there. But if you see there every now and again there's a little tube worm and it opens up like an eyelash there look there's one and as soon as you disturb it it shoots back inside there look I don't know if you can see it there. There was a little gobby as well. This here is a parasitic anemone. Can you see? Look, it's on the back of a hermit crab. There, look. That hermit crab has got a little shell with that massive an enemy on the back look. Imagine I'm going to drag all that round. Oop. Session wouldn't be complete without a dogfish egg. There's two there. One there and one there. There. See? See what I mean? It's created like a little bit of a hollow just sat there feeding. See it? That's what we're after. Perfect. Bingo. Now we've got Oh yes. Right, if you ever find one on the shore and it's like this and it's open, what you need to do is give it a couple of taps. There look. If it closes up tight, you know it's alive. So it's good to take. It's got a slipper limpet on its back. Oh poor girl. That crab is full of parasites. That is underneath her fan there is where she's supposed to hold eggs. And if you can see that big white bit in the middle, that's a parasite. And it's held it open and she's actually got a queen scallop and a mussel now living in there. Poor girl. There's one. Perfect. A little hitchhiker on its back. The 
there is a fish just down in by my feet it's only maybe about that long but it's just in here see the little ends I think it was a little baby bass I just can't see it now where I've stirred the water up but yeah I disturbed it with the uh, disturbed it with my foot it darted around and then stayed in here Let's see if I can see it again I don't know if it was hunting in the shallows or what. I've actually found an unusual type of starfish. Now I haven't seen one of these types before. I don't actually know what this is. But I'm definitely going to go back and research it. I think it is a sand star. But I'm not 100% sure. Let's go a photo and let it go. Some nice mussels in amongst here. Just not very many of them. Perfect. Another one with some seaweed on him. Oh. There's a rockling. You can see it there, look. That's an interesting one. Hey, yeah. Uh, that there. See that ridge line there where my thumb is? And there on the back. At some point in this in this scallop's life, has had some happened to it, hasn't it? Loads of Venus clams. Calm down in there, yo. Brilliant. Look at the size of that oyster. That has to be the biggest oyster I've ever seen in my life. Look at it. Got all those layers in it. How many years old must this be? Jesus, it weighs about weighs about two kilos. Size of that. You'd like to think there'd be a pearl in there, wouldn't you? <laughs> we'll get a photo of him and then we'll put it somewhere safe. I can't go over that. It's an absolute monster of an oyster. Right, look what we've got here. We had an absolutely fantastic night's foraging. 13 sized scallops in the end. Now, I don't know about you, I don't like the number 13. So what I'm gonna do is I've got, I've got the three smaller ones in here and I'm gonna take them and we'll let them go on the way back. But what, look what we've got. 
I've got a fantastic, I've got a lovely little boil of cockles there. These are just the European cockle. What ten stunning scallops? Look at them. You can hear them clacking, can't you? And we did find one token oyster. Now, I don't usually take oysters. People in previous videos have been cursing me for leaving oysters behind, so I said, all right, I'll take one next time. I'm taking one. I did find a monster oyster, and I mean, it was like like a grapefruit. It was the biggest one I've ever seen. Oh, calm down. Uh, but I had to put that one back. It was just too old. I just thought, this thing's probably older than I am. But I, I, I can't go over these. Stunning scallops. Yep. So these guys are going to come with me and we're going to go to Spargo's kitchen. It is. What time is it? Yeah. It's half past two in the morning. Um, we will go and see Jim tomorrow. Today. Today. <laughs> yeah. Let's get wrapped up because tide's coming in and it's been raining. Go. Here we are in Spargo's kitchen. We have our forage from well last night, this this morning. I will um, I'll, I'll give mention straight away that we did pick up one nice sized oyster as well. But from speaking to Jim, he says they're much better when they've been when they've been purged for like a week in clean water. The scallops and the cockles I've had in clean seawater. For the past, I don't know what time is it now? Past 10 hours, and they've cleaned out quite well. But the oyster, I think what we're going to do is we'll take that and we'll let that go, and then I will I will get some from um, Market Falcatch that have been purified, and we'll do those another time. Uh, I will hand you straight over. Good morning, welcome to Spargo's Kitchen, and uh, what a lovely haul we've got. I was thinking with the scallops, we'll perhaps do those like little Indian styles, so we're going to make up a very mild, spiced coconut creamy sauce to go with those. And these little beauties, we'll just pop in a hot pan to open, stuff them with some herby garlicky breadcrumbs and make up uh, sort of a vegetable ratatouille to go with them. So for ingredients, we've got uh, some onions in the cupboard, celery, aubergine peppers for the ratatouille, for the scallops I've got um, cumin, turmeric, coconut milk and fresh ginger, some chilies, garlic and as a little side accompaniment I'm going to do roasted cauliflower. <laughs> Not and that it, I'm a small loser or anything. And it won't be me. 2020 shut off. This one's got an overbite. He <laughs> left this one for me. <laughs> oh. Was it? I didn't count. I think, but well, it was only it ten, was, wasn't there? We're drawing that one. I think we did with five each. Gosh, this is tight. Right, we've shook all the scallops off and Jim has just thrown the scallops into a hot pan, not the scallops, sorry, cockles, cockles. Uh, just want to 
tease them open. That's just a little bit of just plain water in there, isn't it? Yes. And I think that will probably do them. So heat off and we'll clean the scallops. Right, we prise the shells off, the, the top shells off the, um, off the scallops with a spoon, just running around the bowl of the, of the shell to loosen the frill. And then with your fingers, we just want to remove all of the frill and this black bit, which is the stomach. Also, there's a little slightly harder white piece there, which is the muscle, and it's best just to nip that off with your fingers. Just take your time. It's just the little part that attaches to the shell, isn't it? It's that's right, it's the muscle that, muscle that holds it. It's, as you say, it's quite true. And then you end up with that beautiful nugget of, of flesh. That's the scallops done. And now, cockles. Cockles. They just literally had seconds into a hot pan just so that the shells popped open. And you're just keeping those in the half shell, aren't you? That's it. Barely. They're barely cooked. And then what we're going to do is make up some uh, make up some garlicky herby breadcrumbs. Just stuff them into the shell. No grit or anything in this. No, they're beautifully clean. Uh, cauliflower. I've just taken the heart out and uh, cut these down into small sort of pieces. There's a uh, little ground black pepper, a little sprinkling of salt. I'm just putting a, a large pinch of cumin and we're going to have a splash of olive oil. This will just carry those slightly curry flavours or Indian spice flavours through. Right, that's going to go on to a baking sheet. I've got it. The oven's preheated. 190 degrees. And we'll put that in to cook. We'll give it 20 minutes and see how we get. Yeah, just chopping up some couple of cloves of garlic and I've got some diced onions sweated down in a little sunflower oil and then I'm going to add in there add a little salt just to help the onion and turn the heat down no need to bother peeling it just. Why do people feel it? Uh, I don't know. You don't have to. Does it, it not make any difference? No, it will run through a grater. Um, you never find the, the skin. Always makes me cringe a little, always makes me cringe a little bit watching people work with a grater like that because I always imagine it taking a knuckle or a... <laughs> Keep your fingers out of the way, John, that's the answer. Right, ginger's in. To the wash. And on. The fibrous, really fibrous stuff is left behind. I will wrap that for use in another it dish. Is, it? Almost plucked that. Yeah. Brown turmeric. I suppose a teaspoon. Not too much turmeric because it will make things bitter. <coughs> but the same teaspoon of ground cumin. So you've got your, your onion, your garlic, Lick. your ginger, pepper, salt, ground black pepper, salt, ground turmeric, ground cumin. And well, that's just that's sunflower oil, isn't it? It's a little sunflower oil. It just smells delicious already. Mm. Just going to put a lid on that. So these are the onions, which we had the, the lid on the pan for oh, a scant two or three minutes, I suppose. So they're nicely softened, not too much colour. And the spices and garlic. 
So we're just going to leave it on the lowest possible heat. And in the meantime, I've got a pan with a little oil, chopped pepper, and a couple of onions. That's going in. A couple of bowls of garlic, just very roughly chopped. Bit of salt, a uh, tin of coconut milk, which I just open, stir it up. This is a 400 ml tin. I'm going to start with perhaps half of that, and I'm just going to leave below that to simmer for a couple of minutes. Uh, celery for the ratatouille. I'm just topping and tailing those stalks, and that's going to go in with the. I'm going to slice this up rather small. Carol doesn't like celery. And if I don't tell her, it's not, it's in there. I'm not a fan of it. I don't like the flavour of it on its own. But, uh, uh, I it again, it. that's another one of those fantastic ve ve vegetables that's dumped in salt. That's just joyous. Let's, let's introduce you to eating the heart of the cauliflower. Hold a piece of it back and I'll try a bit on the salty. Yeah, as long as I can't taste the celery in it, I don't mind it. <laughs> But I sliced it quite small, so by the time it softens, it will lend its flavour to the overall dish, but you won't. Okay. I'm just putting a little sprinkling of dried thyme. That's had a couple of minutes. I'm going to turn that off and just let it sit now and develop, and we'll come back to that. Uh, in a while and check it for seasoning. Well, the cauliflower has had 20 minutes, it's not quite there. So I'm just going to loosen, loosen it on the tray and I'll put it back for another another 10 minutes. Just dicing up the aubergine. That will go in later. And courgette. Two uh, chilies. I've, rem I've removed the seeds because uh, Carol doesn't like things overly hot. So I removed the seeds, and that's just going to go in to the pan. And we'll just let that sit in the sauce. off the heat. We just allow that to develop for salt, white pepper, and we'll put in the chopped courgette and the aubergine and we'll turn that to the heat. Just let those take up a little colour. Uh, right, courgette and aubergine went in with the other powder vegetables and they uh, soften nicely. I have here from our freezer some tomato sauce which I made from the glut of tomatoes at the end of the, uh, the growing season. That was a couple of kilos of tomatoes just sweated down for an hour or more with uh, about half the weight of onion and a bit of garlic and then blitzed and passed through a sieve. So there's about 300 mil I would say. And We'll let that. It doesn't have a lovely colour. I'm just going to rip some fresh basil. Right I'm putting some butter off in the pan. This is to fry the uh, white bread crumbs. And I'm just chopping up some garlic. I've poured like, half a teaspoon of salt onto the board and it just provides like a bit of traction for really mincing the garlic down. So that will go into the butter. And the bread, it was just a white loaf of bread that you've just 
Where's your oil? Right, I've melted uh, a couple of ounces of butter in a, on a low heat, added sort of three bulbs of garlic, finely uh, shredded. When the butter was melted, tipped in the breadcrumbs, and I've left them for a minute or two just to soak up the breadcrumbs, and I've just scattered some, uh, some frozen mixed chopped herbs that we had um, from a previous cooking session. They've been in a, in a bag in the freezer, so there's a there's a pinch gone into the ratatouille, and there's a pinch there. Now I'll just leave those breadcrumbs alone for another couple of minutes, so they'll begin to toast underneath, and then we'll stir them. I just melted a little spot of butter in this oval dish, and I'm just going to turn the scallops in the melted butter. The pan is on a low heat, uh, want that nice and hot. Uh, our onion with Indian spices, a little chilli, garlic, co and coconut milk is just on a low simmer. The roasted spiced cauliflower is out of the oven, so that's going to go in. And we've got our lovely vegetable uh, ratatouille simmering away. And your chopped coriander is going to be going into the... The chopped car oh, just chopped a handful of... Uh, coriander stalks and all that's going to uh, the last minute go into the curry sauce one or two people have mentioned before in the other videos it's um, kind of like the coordination bringing anything bringing everything together all at the end it's it is yeah. preparation multitasking yeah indeed uh, with these I'm just going to pick out the, the slightly larger shots some of them are really plump just look. so what I'm going to do is is the really fat ones I'm going to leave in the shells and we'll add those to the curry sauce but the ones with a little uh, with enough space these herby buttery garlicky breadcrumbs I'm going to pile into the shells and then we'll slide them under a hot grill and we'll have those with a ratatouille Time to cook the scallops. Pan is nice and hot. I've turned these scallops in melted butter. The pan is completely dry, there's nothing in there. All of the cooking will be done in a minute or so. I go around sort of clock fashion. When it comes to turning them, I know I start at the top o'clock. of the pan, 12 o'clock. Right, they've had a minute, so I'm just going to go around the pan, turn them over. Precisely what we're looking for, a little caramelisation. And we're just going to give this another minute, and then we'll be out. Right, there's a scallop pan, fresh from the stove. Just a little splash of water, it's a shame to lose all of that. Clean the pan. There's the scallops. Fantastic. There we go. And that can all go in. The shells we've, uh, we've filled with the garlic and bread crumbs are going to go under the hot grill. So the rest I'm just going to pop in here so they can take up a bit of heat with the sauce and we'll just pop a lid on there and leave them for a couple of minutes and then I'll halve some of those scallops and put those in too. Those will go under the grill which is nice and hot. <laughs> Careful. That's hot. Uh, get a lid. there. Right, we're just going to we're just slicing up these scallops uh, to, to go with the underneath the herby breadcrumb and I just want to that's what we want to ob obtain is this sort of translucent center rather than having them cooked so long that they're they're 
that white. It's not pure white. All the way it? through. It's no, it's sli slightly translucent, sort of almost a pearl effect. They eat so much more nicely, slightly underdone rather than overdone. As soon as you go over, don't you just end up like a piece of rubber, don't you? Oh, I've just had these under a preheated grill. I've got some scallops in there under the herby breadcrumbs and the cockles. And I'm just going to slide those the very bottom of the grill because they are, for our purposes, done. Just a final check on the sauce. Mmm. Yep, that's lovely. No. No more seasoning. Clean spoon. No double dipping in this house. Oh, delicious. Oh, I'm ready for plating up, Pat. Here we go. So this is the, the vegetables. We've got onion, garlic, thyme, peppers, courgette and aubergine. This smells absolutely divine. And in here we have our Indian spices with finely chopped onion, garlic. We've got the roasted cauliflower. Some of the cockles in their shells, some of the scallop part. And coriander. What are you eating? Chips. Chips. These are the scallops we pan fried and just topped with herby crumbs. And the cockles. And then we'll have a lovely bit. You going to try all this, John? Definitely. Okay. Have a got. There we go. Do you want any of this? Yeah, I'll try a bit of everything. Scallop. Mm. John's moving on to the second course. That's uh, chilies and ginger, coconut milk, isn't it? Mm. Now we are all finished up. I think that tells you how nice it was. That was absolutely delicious. Uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed joining me out on the show. Another fantastic night's foraging um, and a wonderful family cook up. Can't say any more than that. I hope you've enjoyed joining us and see you later.